And that is section 4.3, the first derivative test. In the last couple of sections, we've been looking at whether a function is increasing or decreasing on certain intervals, and then also looking at uh, whether it has max min values uh, somewhere. This section really just follows from that, um, but adds a little tool to make, to make it a little bit faster. Uh, in, in the last lesson, we we found that Fermat's theorem basically told us that if, if a function has a local max or a min at a critical value c, then there's one of two things possible. Either the derivative is zero, like in the case of you know diagrams that look like this, where we've got a max or a min here, um, or the derivative may also be undefined, like in some kind of point e situation where it still has a max or a min, but you can't find a slope of a tangent there. Um, there are situations where the first derivative is zero, and you still don't have a max or a min. Like if you just look at the plain old cubic function y equals x cubed, but what we can see, though, is that if you do have a max, you must have increasing and then have decreasing. So in other words, the first derivative uh, must be greater than zero as you head to the maximum, and the first derivative must be less than zero as you head away from it. And that's even true in the case of where the, where the first derivative is undefined at the maximum. You still have has to increase and then decrease. And for a minimum, basically the opposite is true. You must decrease and then increase so that you have a first derivative that's negative and then changes to positive. So basically our first derivative test is just going to allow us to take any function, take its derivative, find its critical numbers, and then have a look and see whether we've got increasing, decreasing in between them. So let me show you an example here. We're given a nice polynomial here, f of x equals 3x cubed minus 81x plus 13. Even if you can't picture this and you're not use, using graphic calculator, so the first thing we'll get into is taking the derivative. We'll say f prime x equals 9x squared minus 81. Um, to find critical values, we need to see if there's anywhere where that's undefined or zero. Well, it's never undefined. But to solve, when does this equal zero? Uh, factor it. x squared minus 9. And so x minus 3 times x plus 3. So I have two critical values, x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. So now what I need to do is figure out um, what's happening at those values. Is it a maximum or a minimum? So uh, let's pick a number to the left of negative 3, negative 15, and I'm going to have uh, negative times negative, which gives me a positive. So this graph is increasing uh, everywhere to the left of that. In between, if I pick a number like 0, I have a negative times a positive, which is a negative. It's decreasing in between, which means if it increases and decreases, I have a max, local max, at x equals minus 3. And we'll find the y value in a second. Let's check to the right of 3, put in a value like 10, positive times positive, positive, increasing. So if it decreases and then increases, there must be a minimum, so local min at x equals 3. Um, if I want the actual the actual value of the function, so max value is going to be what you get when you find out f of negative 3. The minimum value, this value is when you do f of 3. So f of negative 3 is going to be 3 times negative 3 cubed minus 81 times negative 3 plus 13. And f of 3, same idea, 3 times 3 cubed minus 81 times 3 plus 13. And the values I get for these are maximum value of 175, minimum value of negative 149. Looking at points on the graph, negative 3 comma 175 is a point on the graph, and 3 comma negative 149. Uh, hopefully would agree with a picture that you'd have of a cubic function in your mind. You'd have a maximum value, a minimum value, at local max, local min at those two spots.